Consider this imaginary coordinate system, x, y, z, and let's assume that a uniformly charged disk of radius r and total charge Q sits on the xy plane. We wish to find the electric field at point P on the z-axis that is obviously at a distance z from the center of the disk. The center of the disk also coincides with the origin. Now I've written this equation which we derived from our previous video and this equation gives us the electric field at point P due to a surface charge with surface charge density sigma. We will use this formula to find the electric field produced by a uniformly charged disk and later an infinite sheet of charge. So to use this integral, we divide the disk into infinitesimal regions and just integrate it to consider all contributions. Now we can divide this disk into patches of small squares like this one. But integrations will become difficult because we will be monitoring the x and y variables enclosed by a square root due to the Pythagorean theorem. A more efficient way of integrating any object is to observe its symmetrical feature and notice that this disk presents cylindrical symmetry with respect to the z-axis. As such, we can divide the disk into strips of rings like this one. And since we already have an expression for electric field due to a charge ring, remember that we derived that equation from previous videos. And to begin with, uh, let's focus first on the electric field due to one charge ring, like this one. And this ring is at a distance r from the origin. So basically, this ring has a radius of small r from the origin up to here. So we calculate the contribution of the entire disks at point P by integrating from R equals 0 up to R equals capital R, which is the radius of the disk. So let me point out that this charge ring here has a thickness of dr. And also, we designate the distance of one portion of the ring to point P as L because we already use the variable small r for the radius of the ring so we just use the variable L for the distance of the portion of the ring to point P. So let me write again the electric field produced by a ring of charge that we derived in previous video. Now, we return to the figure, and with respect to the disk, the ring contributes an infinitesimal charge dq. This ring here has a charge of dq, and it contributes an electric field of dE. But again, from our previous calculations, only the z component of these rings do not cancel out. We're actually looking for dE sub z only. Hence, the magnitude of the electric field of the z component of the charge ring is dE sub z equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dQ multiplied to z over z squared, the distance of point P, plus this time, this capital R here is just small r because small r is the radius of the charge ring. Okay, so 3 halves, that's it. We're only looking for the magnitude. Now the ring's area is dA. And just like any other area, it is equal to length times width. Now from the figure, the infinitesimal area of the ring is equal to its length, which is 2 pi r, times its width or thickness, which is equal to dr. Also, the equation of surface charge density is sigma equals dq over dA. So if I rewrite this in terms of dq, then dq equals sigma dA. And let me plug this expression for dA here. So I'll end up with dq equals sigma 
times 2 pi r dr. And I'm going to plug this dq into this dq. Because we are doing this so that we can integrate from r equals 0 to capital R. That's why I forcibly try to convert this integral in terms of the small radius r. So getting the contributions from r equals 0 to r equals capital R. We now have an expression for e sub z. So let's move some constant outside the integral sign. Notice that the integral here is in the form of integral of u du divided by quantity u squared plus a squared raised to 3 halves. And this integral is equal to negative 1 over u squared plus a squared raised to 1 half. I've shown the solution of this integral in a separate video. The link is in the description box below. So using this relationship, e sub z is now equal to, again, 2 pi sigma z divided by 4 pi epsilon naught negative 1 over my u here is the integration variable u du so basically it's r dr here so u here is r squared plus the constant here is the distance of point p from the origin which is z z squared raised to 1 half it's evaluated from radius equal to 0 to radius equal to capital R or the radius of the disk. So evaluating this expression, pi here cancels out and this 2 fourths become 1 half. We have sigma z over 2 epsilon naught and negative 1 over capital R, R squared plus Z squared raised to 1 half minus negative 1 over 0, this becomes 0, plus Z squared raised to 1 half. So if I try to multiply this Z here inside, my final expression is e sub z equals sigma over 2 epsilon naught bracket. This one here becomes 1 minus this term, 1 over... Remember that I'm supposed to have a z in the numerator like this, but I'll transfer this in the denominator. So this becomes 1 over square root of r squared over z squared plus 1. This is our expression for the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk. I have rewritten the equation on another page. And again, this equation represents the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk. Now we would like to ask, what happens if we have an infinite sheet of charge instead of a regular charged disk? In this expression, the R here is the rate use of the disk. So in order for us to have an infinite sheet of charge from a charged disk, we just assume that this charged disk has an infinite radius. So in other words, let's see what will happen to its electric field when R approaches positive infinity. So apparently, for the case where the radius of the charged disk approaches positive infinity, e sub z equals sigma over 2 epsilon naught times 1 minus 1 over. Now, when r or the radius approaches infinity, this entire term here approaches infinity. Hence, this equation is actually approximately equal to 1 minus 1 over infinity. Hence, e sub z equals sigma over 2 epsilon naught. So, in vector form, the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught and its direction is perpendicular to the surface. In our example, it is z hat.
So this is the expression for the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge. By the way, z hat here can be replaced with any direction perpendicular to the surface. This is actually an amazing result because the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge does not depend on z or the distance of point of measurement to the surface charge. When you have an infinite sheet of charge, the electric field is fixed or constant no matter where you are. So in reality, this is consistent with the fact that as you move away from an infinite charge, more region of the surface can contribute to the vector sum of the electric field. Now to visualize this, consider this sheet of charge and all sides extend to infinity and consider two points point one and point two point one is closer to the infinite sheet of charge than point two Now, due to symmetry, if we consider an infinitesimal area here, letter A, so it contributes an electric field on this part. Let's write it as D E sub A. And due to symmetry, we also have another region here at the base of point P. So it also contributes D E sub B. But notice that I can break these vectors into component. This D sub A has a component perpendicular to the surface and parallel to the surface. And also D E sub B also has a component perpendicular to the surface and parallel to the surface. Notice that due to symmetry, these two vectors here cancels out, but only the component perpendicular to the surface do not cancel out. So this is due to symmetry. For point two, there's result is the same but it is farther away from the surface so it must be weaker if i try to write a and b here again this same equidistant points uh, it contributes a weaker electric field because it is farther from the surface so here it also contributes d e sub b that is perpendicular to the surface and d e sub a that is perpendicular to the surface the original electric field at point 2 is this one d e sub b but i broken down into components and apparently the components that are parallel to the surface cancels out again based on this figure alone we can deduce that the electric field at point 2 should be weaker but if we have an infinite sheet of charge remember that point 1 and point 2 should experience the same electric field this this is because since point 2 is farther away from the surface, it can actually view more regions of the surface. Farther regions can also contribute. Remember that this sheet extends to infinity. So somehow, this farther regions adds up or contribute to the electric field at point 2 and these additional contributions maintain the electric field magnitude sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!